What does one call a dinosaur wearing a Richard Mille? An eye saw. <laughs> Get it? An eye saw. <laughs> I, I'm equally fascinated and appalled at the same time. Okay, hi guys, and welcome to the show. And I'm joined once again by Mark from Long Island Watch. How are you, sir? I'm doing good. Doing good. How are you doing? I'm sleepy. Yeah. I've yeah, had a sleepy, huge yeah. meal. Yeah, I, know. I saw. It. I saw it. It was. <laughs> yeah, I had to. Yeah, I don't eat often, but when I do, yeah, you it's... go Gavon. Yeah, you go full Gavon style. <laughs> And you had your sushi? I had my, yeah, I feel very, good now. Very well, nice. I got a long drive home, so I got to stay awake. Right, okay, fair enough. I'm going to try and stay awake for this. Good luck. Yeah. <laughs> maybe maybe you'll be so disgusted that you'll want to stay awake. <laughs> what are we talking about today? Um, watch brands that we don't... Oh, we did do a wristwatch check. Yes. Watch yes, brands sorry. that we do not like. Yeah. Established. Established, yeah, and I uh, since researching this, I found a new admiration for the watch brand. And that I, I can't kind of stand. same thing here, but yeah, we'll get into that. Yeah, we'll get into uh, it. So I'm wearing. Well, I got two on. Oh, I haven't so seen this. This is new. This is an Islander Look at that case. JFK, made after the airport. Right. Oh, this dark and storm. You see the clouds on the dial. Oh wow. Yeah, isn't that cool? That is cool. The GMT. Yeah. Uh, and then you ever seen one of these? Have no. I worn this for you before? This is the Seiko White Knight. I want to say it's roughly 20-ish years old, somewhere around there. I don't wear it often. Beautiful white silver dial. Incredible. Uh, it, the lug guards remind me of the Aquas. Yeah, and it's it's really nice. The bezel's integrated really well. Look at the bracelet. My brain is slightly overloading of all the different elements. There's yeah. a little bit of Munster. Yeah. There's a little, maybe a little bit of. Uh, Tuna, I guess, with the with the with the with a riding I've never up seen on the this. case. Yeah, they made a few nights. There was an orange night, a white night, and there was definitely a black night. Yeah, look at the crown guards. I've never it runs seen runs on a 7s 26. I mean, it's super right. nice, super uh, old. So, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. super old. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> very very nice. Thank you, thank you. And, I'm impressed. And you? Yeah, the true the day. I feel like I was wearing this during once when you yeah. recorded. Yeah, you've worn it before. I can never remember the day of the week. Oh, it's, then it's perfect. And I'm not going to wear the, the solid gold one because it's, you know... A little, too, a little too in the face. Yeah, so this is a good... Nice. ETA, just, yeah. Beautiful. It really, really, it's timeless. Timeless. So what, what's the brand you so, cho so chose? So you asked, you said, hey, <laughs> <laughs> you, you messaged me and said, is there a brand, established brand that you don't like? And I said, yeah. I just answered with yes. Right, yeah. <laughs> um, and... I, I chose Tag Heuer, and not that I feel like I have to caveat. Not that I don't like them. Right. I feel like they are not offering anything today that excites me. Right. I. You're not alone, by the way. I, I, they have rich history, yeah. no doubt, and I could read forever yeah. on the notes and everything they've done. But I feel like if I go into a store today and I want to get a tag, except for the Monaco. I must say I have an appreciation for the Monaco. Right. Beautiful. The old ones, the new yeah. ones, they look cool. I think I have a book of oh, Steve McQueen right here. No, there you go. That would be the guy. Yeah. Let's have a look. Yeah. Sorry, carry yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. So on. It looks like an ordinary Monaco, but in fact it's one of the six watches that was on set for the movie Le Mans in 1970, where Steve McQueen was being trained by Joe Siffer, one of our Hoyer ambassadors. And Steve, he wanted to look exactly like his hero and his teacher, Joe Siffer. So, of course, he needed a Hoyer on the wrist. Unless you're talking about that, and again, it's no offense to anybody. I just feel like an Aqua Racer, mm -hmm. uh, an F1, uh, the Link, the Carrera. Mm -hmm. They just look... Octavia. They, yeah, Octavia. Octavia, yeah. 
they're not bad. Some of them are not bad. I just feel like they're lacking something that the brand is missing. Uh, there's a design element or something. To me, they just look, uh, I dare I say, pedestrian. A Carrera can look like a, a fossil, I mm -hmm. guess. Not that that's bad. In real life, they have great glitz. They have great fastening, obviously great mis machining, materials, processes, finishing, fit and finish movements. Do you feel the same way about their old watches? See, the old watches, because I can look at them today, so it depends how old. So my hatred goes back to like the 80s and early 90s, right, I guess around right. the time TAG made that transition. Yeah, right. which they, people don't know TAG stands for Technique de Avant Garde, right? right? And Hoyer was the founder. Jack uh, Hoyer. Yeah, and then and Edward oh, Hoyer was the oh, oh, founder. Right, Jack mentioned. Hoyer's like his grandson or something. Right, that's right, yeah. Jack Hoyer, a legend of our company history, would join the family business. The fourth generation to do so, his first responsibility was to set up Hoyer Timing Corporation in North America together with his uncle Hubert. He loved Mies van der Rohe, Bauhaus, and these sorts of mid-century modern designers as we know them today. And he really integrated all of these elements into the design of our wristwatches during this period. The brand went from Hoyer, founded in 18-something, uh, 1860. Um, Tag got them in 85, and then in 99, uh, Louis Vuitton, you know, just like everything else, Louis right. Vuitton bought them over. Um, but around the time that uh, Tag bought them, they came out with these quartz, the plasticky watches that yeah. were like, I never seen them in the mall, they were like 700 bucks. And I was right. like, I mean, this is back in those dollars, early 90s dollars. And I was like, wow, that's like a 700 or $600 watch. I'm like, I really didn't understand it. And to me, it wasn't, there's nothing revolutionary about it. Mm. Um, and that might be where my hatred stems from. Mm. Uh, but no, uh, the stuff like the Octavias and stuff from like mm -hmm. the 60s. The, cla the Carrera, the, the, the classic stuff. Those are really stuff. nice looking. Yeah. And, yeah, and yeah. still to this day, I feel, but I feel like there's none of that in today's designs. I, I'm gonna- Except for the Monaco. Right, I'm gonna slightly disagree with you, Go ahead. but I know what you're getting at. I've reviewed various of the new ones mm -hmm. and I think their mistake is actually they do too much of pulling from their heritage okay. and not enough- Reinventing? Rein yeah, and it's difficult because if you look at any brand, you look at um, Tudor or anything, like they've done a really good job of taking the Tudor Submariner and then making it the Black Bay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. they, they did- Transforming themselves. To transform it. You can see the link. I'm actually in the process of writing and doing a video all about my experiences with Tudor and mm -hmm. how the Black Bay does not feel like the tr traditional Submariner. Mm -hmm. I can see a lot of the Carrera style in some of their newer pieces. Yes. I don't feel they've done anything, and this is the thing, they, they have brought, they've done crazy turbulence. So that's, the, that's like my, that's where I am. I'm like, well, I remember when they came out with the belt-driven Monaco, that was, right. I actually wrote it down, because I was like, wow, that was that long ago. It was nearly 20 years ago right. that they started with a belt-driven watch. And they're finally, I don't know if it's like the, the V4 that they're coming out with now, I don't know if it's full production or whatever, but they're finally coming out with it. They came out with the Caliber 360, which was the 1 100th, second mm -hmm. chronograph and crazy movements and that was how long ago that was 18 years ago mm. i feel like it's almost like a what have you done for me lately like you had all this great tech and you did all these great things but where has that been transitioned into what you're offering today yeah well i feel like there's several levels like the basic eta mm -hmm. just standard yes, stuff and then you've got this this upper level that's kind of inaccessible to, to, yes. to most people. Yeah, they have the, the micrograph or whatever that's like, that measures one two thousand of a that, second. D is it Tag that did that crazy uh, Super Mario thing? Why am I confusing with somebody else? Super Mario watch? Yeah. Re recently? Yeah. Somebody did Super Mario recently. Yes, who was it? A few moments later. A few moments later. <laughs> Uh, Tag Hoyer connected by Super Mario. Right, right. Oh, and Casio did it too. Yeah, well, Casio. So that, that, Casio can do it. That makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. This is a watch. It's, it's yeah. affordable, collectible. But that, I remember they did something crazy. 45 millimeters. No, look at that. Oh, my God. Who buys this? Did anyone buy this? Someone bought it. Someone bought it. I mean, look, if you really $1, like. 1100 bucks. Yeah, Jeez. I'm sorry. Oh, wait, out, out of stock <laughs> online. Well, so maybe people did buy it. But yeah, no, I just, yeah, it's like a jump the shark moment. What demographic are you appealing to? What is this collaboration? Like, it's like a mishmash. Yeah. Because the link is like there, and we've talked about before, Frederick Constant and all these other brands trying to meld into the smartwatch market. So link yeah. is there. So would you say that their attempts at smartwatch, because I remember even 2016, 17, they were doing that and they were just huge things. Yeah. And they didn't really, aside from the shape of a lug, 
yeah. it doesn't really have, have a connection. Do I don't see how you're gonna, if you wanna go that path, I can't see a diehard tag fan not just buying an Apple Watch because they probably have an Apple phone anyway. Right, right. So it's almost like there's a leg up there. Um, but yeah, but back to just more of the, so, you know, I, I wrote down their history, all the aviation clocks, all their automobile clocks, all this great stuff they did. But if I feel like... John Glenn had one? Uh, in space, that was, uh, let's see, uh, first Swiss watchmaker in space, yeah. 1962. I have no desire to own one. Mm. I've held many of them. Um, the chronos just seem, they just like really nice chronographs. But mm. there's nothing, it doesn't, there's no, there's no love affair between mm. me and them. Yeah, I could see myself with a Carrera. I think they're pretty snazzy, but that's the thing is that when you get into that price range, that's a it's couple like, grand. Uh, ooh, For a couple yeah. grand, you can get other watches. And again, yeah. it, every, to each his or her right. or their own, whatever they want to do. But you're going to spend two thousand dollars on a three-handed watch with an Eta movement, I feel like there's yeah. other things you can do. Or four or five grand uh, for a chrono movement, again, there's other things that right. you can get out there. When it comes to tag, for me, I have a, a kind of love-hate. It's not, I don't like a lot of what they do. I don't own one. I've owned one in the past. Okay. There was a moment, in, especially growing up in England, when I was in England, uh, I remember they were the, some of the, like, the more wealthy kids in the school, they had the tags and yep. they, they had the F1s and they yep. had the, um, the one that uh, Ayrton Senna had. It has these links that are like Vs, mm -hmm. that curvy Vs mm -hmm. that go into each. And I remember kind of like, oh, that's so cool and wanting one, but right. only because I didn't really know. Right. It was just, they were really popular. Right, right. Well, with, something, with a brand that's so, as you mentioned, you know, uh, racing, so tied into F1, which is the pinnacle of technology, right. you know, squeezing out every gram that you could get to make your car faster. I just think that there's more they could be doing in the, in the design department. I agree. I agree. Uh, I, it's, the, it's a tricky one. Uh, they need to do a Black Bay thing. Right. Not, I'm not necessarily... But something that brings them from what they're doing now, just, just a different look. Like, I know a tag from a mile away. I can tell what they, I know what they look like. Yeah. But again, just to me, it just looks like almost every other watch out there, or a lot of other watches out there. Yeah. A lot of people might say, this guy's crazy. I love Tag. I don't know what he's talking about. Yeah. Your brand, I think, has a lot of hate around I, I have to. whereas I don't totally hate it. Right. I, um, I have to confess something that I have kind of grown to understand it during the research of this video, because... So I've basically printed out the entire, usually I make, make my own notes, but as you can see, I've basically printed out the entirety of their Wikipedia page about Richard Mille, because it is fascinating. Mm -hmm. If you want to know how to make a ton of money, I mean, it was started by a guy, Richard Mille, he studied marketing. It's a blueprint of how to market a brand. Okay. Actually, tag should read, read this. It. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's two guys, and I apologize if I, if I butcher. So it's obviously Richard Mille, which he's, he's uh, French originally, uh, and also in Italian. I'm not sure if it, I should say the Italian way because it's like Grazie Mille, Mille a thousand, or Mille because he's French. I, I'm not sure. Still the, the chairman, CEO, and who was it? It was um, uh, uh, Dominique Gounod. Yeah, Guno, I'll go with that. Guno, Guno. 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 Uh, we're not French. I, I apologize, I don't French, speak right. French. Richard Mille watches are designed to be very shock resistant and accurate. Okay, fair enough. Um, they are light in weight using materials including grade 5 titanium. I don't even know what that is, Lytal. Carbon TPT mm -hmm. and graphene, graphene, graphene. right? Mm -hmm. So, obviously nowadays you see almost every watch brands, especially the diver watch brands using forged carbon and all this stuff. Yeah. So they were an early innovator in these kind of experimental materials. Sure. But that description sounds like a G-Shock, right? Yeah, sure. All it is is a G-Shock, way higher level right. and mechanical. Correct. In such a small watch, which had to withstand shocks of 5,000 G and wear and tear, loaded with technicality, it is a performance piece. With a total weight of 36 grams, strap included, the RMO704 is a superlative piece. The lightest, boldest, and most energetic in this new range of watches. They innovated in things like uh, the gem set ceramics, their, their laminated uh, sapphire crystals, basically a lot of the materials 
the invention of variable geometry rotor in the RM011, I have no idea what that means, Invention, invention of a detachable rotor. So I presume these things are to do with the shock resistance. I guess so. Right? Yeah. And my issue, and I realized the more I, it's a rabbit hole I just right. fell into, right? right? The more I, I found out about them, the more I realized there's the, the brand as a horological innovator. Right. There's the marketing of it. Yeah. Two very different things. And then there's the final product, right? Right. I can't stand the look of them. Right. In fact, there's a hilarious quote. I've got to read you this quote. This is in the, under their criticism section. Richard Millet have been criticized for creating, in quote marks, tasteless watches and following the uglier sneaker trend. In 2021, American rapper Sean Combs described Richard Millet watches as ugly, in quotes, and likened them to Timex watches, saying... Same boat. <laughs> right, yeah, <laughs> saying he had two or three but never wore them. Yeah, it's actually what I would <laughs> Just, do. Ah, I've got a couple of them. Nah, they're ugly. Which, which is an interesting, that, that was a bit of a flex. Right, you know? right, right. Uh, well Welcome back. Music mogul Sean Diddy Combs is facing new allegations of sexual assault, this time. You know, this all started with the Cassie lawsuit, uh, and then there were two more accusers. Let me ask you, why, why do you, so before you started going down the yeah. rabbit hole, why, do you, why did you or do you dislike them? I disliked the, the way, the flexing culture that has surrounded it. Yeah. They are the ultimate um, status symbol. For people that don't know, price ranges. Couple well, hundred, a couple hundred grand. Yeah, they start off in sky's the limit. Yeah. Depends if you get the fancy schmancy. Yeah. I get what they're trying to do and I respect their technology, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. And they're amazingly made and all of yes. that, but aesthetically they don't do anything for me. Correct. Okay. So that combined with, because I, I, I said this in a recent video, we, we taste with our eyes first. Mm -hmm. It's always so. That's already failed Got for it. me. Yeah, it is. And then, then we taste with our wallet. <laughs> yeah. Then I can't even taste it because, right. it, you know. Got it. It's, and it's not because I'm complaining, oh, I, because I have no money and right, blah, right. blah, blah. It, yeah. No, because even if I had the money, that's not. No, I'd buy a house or a nice car or a right. boat. Right. I'd buy a boat, so I want to go sailing. Right. I don't want to have that on my wrist. Got it. Oh, and that's another thing. They've been accused, one of their criticisms was. Uh, oh, this is this is equally hilarious. Um, in 2021, the magazine watch re reseller Chrono24 labelled Richard Mille watches as not worth the hype, noting that one such wearer was robbed in Beverly Hills of the watch and suffered four gunshots and a trip to the hospital. While these incidences are rare, they are another form of the unwanted aspect of the watches. There was um, a racer that had his stolen off. One of the young yeah. guys, young racers, one yeah. of the really, really young guys. Yeah, it was stolen or something like that. I don't think he got, I don't know if he got it back. See, on the converse, because as you, when you found it, you went down the rabbit hole with them. For me, I can understand it because of the tech involved. I think it's ugly or it's not in my taste, yeah. but I can look at it from an engineering perspective and say, wow, holy crap, that's yeah. amazing that they could do that, yeah. you know, on that scale or little pieces and, you know, the mechanical movement in and of itself is amazing. Yeah. But the fact of what they can do with the different materials and then the cases that they do. Going back to tag, you yeah. see Richard Millet, and he was only found in 2001. Yeah, this in this short time, he has a design language. Yeah. He has a look. If you see a Richard Millet, you know what it is. You know what it Unless is. Unless it's a fake. Unless it's a fake. Yeah. But you know, oh, that's trying to be a Richard Millet. Yes. Right? And this is what tag's missing. Yes. Maybe they should do a square, like a more affordable, within their realistic market, mm -hmm. demographic, whatever it is, mm -hmm. kind of like a Richard Mille, but their... Their, their take on it? Yeah. Because they were a, a company founded on tech, clearly. Right. And I would say that this is a company founded on tech. Right. For the most part, in tech and money. Tech and money. And this is another... This is marketing genius, okay? So... I wanted to know, if you look at the economics, there's a, the Wikipedia, which I, I haven't seen this before on um, the sales figures, right? Revenue in Swiss francs in 2017 was 260 million Swiss francs. And they produced that year, how many, how many watches they produced? A couple of thousand. 4,000? Yeah, a couple of thousand. Yeah. Which is not a lot of watches. No, it's not, <laughs> but it shows that there's a lot of people in the world that have a lot of money. Yeah. Disposable yeah, yeah. money. 
It's the 1% of the 1%. Yeah, probably even more than that. Yeah. They're very mysterious at how the company, it's independent obviously, but how the, the, it's owned in terms of, so they have part, what they call partners, right? Mm. And the list is incredibly impressive, right? So it's Fernando Alonso, the Formula One Now driver. what are these, are these, um, when you say partners, these are like investors? That's the thing. Oh, okay. Jack Hoyer, he was very good at getting it on the wrist of Steve McQueen, yep. mm -hmm. right? And then form that connection. Right. right? You think you think that square watch, you think Monaco, you think, you think Monaco, Steve McQueen, yeah, sure. vice versa, right? But what does it mean to be a partner? Right. Have these do we, these people own a share? This is what I mean by the, like status signaling of the highest level. It's like, oh, I wear a Richard Mille, and therefore I'm part of this group club. So we got people like. Fernando Alonso, a Formula One driver. We got uh, Jackie Chang. We, oh, all, we all know who really? Jackie Chang is. Charles Leclerc, another Formula One driver. Mm -hmm. I'm looking really uh, quick. You could just pick I'm up names. I'm looking to see if I see anybody, any names. Rafael N Nadal. Sure. Uh, John Malkovich. John Malkovich. Yeah, come on. Wait, wait. American actor, producer, and fashion designer? I guess maybe he helped with the, with the watch. He's a fashion designer? Hey, hey, there he is. Your boy down there. Oh! Sylvester Stallone. Stallone. <laughs> there he is. Mick Schumacher, so I presume that's his brother. Alan Prost. Yeah. Lot of sports people. Roberto Mancini, uh, the football manager, Italian football. Crazy. I'm pretty sure Schwarzenegger's on the list. Pharrell Williams, mm -hmm. who's okay, now yeah. gone to even higher heights because he's Oh, he's LVMH now. He's oh, their creative it? director. Yeah. It. It's an impressive list. Yeah. It's not that long. It's we're talking about what a couple of dozen people. Yeah. How does that work? Like, what's well, the what's the finances of this? Like, I, would you like to guess? No. No. <laughs> Obviously, brands create their own hype, but I think that name another brand that's like this. I can't. They're, and, they're, like, and I think that that's the. The way they're marketed, yeah. the what, what they produce, their whole business model. The only other brand that would be possibly like this would be real high-end boutique brands. I've seen Miele boutiques in like Vegas and stuff. Right. And there's like three watches on display. And I yeah, guess all I have to yeah. do is sell like one watch a month and the rent is paid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, like, so I think that that is part of the allure. We've talked before about belonging to a club or this right. or that. And this is, somehow they've created the self-perpetuating thing that people want to own, that people aspire to own. Yeah, but maybe I don't. No, I, no, I, I, no, I know, I know. No, I don't I'm, either. To me, it's the opposite of what I aspire to. I, right. Maybe because I'm old school, you know, I like something simple and classic, and I just don't want that kind of stress. Like, you're a target. You wear one of these, you're but, a target. You know, okay, so yeah, I know people have been mugged for them and stuff, but I would say a Rolex is much more recognizable than one of these. If oh, I yeah. have a group of 100 people and I show them a Rolex and I show them a Miele, and I say, well, which one of these is the more prestigious or more, ex which is the more expensive watch? I yeah. don't think people, but people think that the Miele might be a toy. In the past few years, we've seen a lot of rappers getting uh, murdered um, mm -hmm. for very little, just yeah. madness. Crazy reasons. And um, it doesn't take much. If you know that that's a real watch, Right. and you're watching your social media, like for a couple of hundred thousand, that's, there's a lot of bad people that's that are a, willing yeah, to no, do that, that That's dirt. a big meatball on your wrist there. Unless you've got armed security 24-7, yeah. I, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't want to have that kind of... But you have a new appreciation for them now. I do, as a business, as what they're doing, and I think it's weird that we, you chose TAG, and I chose Richard Mille. A lot of the answers for what Tag should be doing are right here on the Richard right, Mille right, right. Uh, Wikipedia page, which is fascinating. Would you ever wear a Richard Mille? Ah, they're kind of big. If they made something small? No, probably not. No. But again, you know, because we've had of this, this, the security aspect? Yeah, and we've had this discussion. Just, it doesn't do anything for me. See, I guess the technology would, does, though. It does, but that would be like the ultimate, I guess... The ultimate litmus test of what you truly believe. If you truly believe that a watch is a status symbol, then no matter what your beliefs are, you will wear one. Do you think this See, list is, is comprised of people that are really into horology? No, I think it's comprised of people that have a lot of money. Right. <laughs> and, and, and that's the truth. Not, not everybody has a couple hundred grand to just blow on a watch. Right. And right. then just keep going about their business, except for people like this. If, if it was as classy looking and 
tasteful and not this kind of garish oversized thing let's say it was it looked more like a cartier tank yeah then it's not a mule i think that's what makes them them yeah. i think that's it you you've it's defined i don't think they can come out with a three-handed watch or you know a regular round case or whatever so i know they're mostly like you know those big yeah, yeah, rectangles yeah. or ten o's. Um, I don't think you can, and that's their DNA. <sighs> I, I'm equally fascinated and appalled at the same time. I I, I find that kind of wealth a bit. Ugh. Yeah, it is. Yeah. But I guess when you have that kind of money, it doesn't make a difference to you. Oh, I'd be hiding a long way away from civilization <laughs> if sure, I had I'm that sure. money. I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> you wouldn't see me for. You would never see me again. Got Bye. It. Got it. See you later. I'll be under a rock. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Any more thoughts about tag? Yeah, I'd love to see them just reinvent what they're doing and take some of this tech that's come out so long ago. Like, mm -hmm. What great thing have they done? I, I, I feel stupid saying it because who am I? But what great thing have they done in the last 10 to 15 years? It's like, where did all the tech go? Um, there's still advances being made by a lot of watchmakers. They're doing different things. They're making stuff happen. Mm -hmm. um, they're on the cusp. They were on the cusp of amazing technology. Mm. Where is that stuff? You know, a lot of times they do. You do things. You know, like stuff is invented you know, for outer space, and within 15, 20 years, it makes it to all of us. You know, mm. that's what. That's why we say we need to invest in the space program. What have they done that they can kind of integrate into today's watches? Mm. That's kind of been for the better. Because usually, when they're doing all this experimental stuff, it's an investment in the future. Mm. So what has happened? And I don't like when I go to the website. You know, last night I was on the website again, just to make sure I didn't miss anything. Mm. And I was on the website, and I'm looking through the watches. And again, I'm just met with this. Yeah. yeah, I almost feel like they need to get a designer in, like like they need a genta to come and shake things up. They yeah, need, they need to do something different. But makes the last ten sense. years have looked exactly the same with them. Yeah. Well, especially something based on motor racing, because motor racing is like it has to be. It has um, to be. You know, it's a motor racing is well big in America. You know, whatever NASCAR, but it's not really. But yeah, you know, F1 and stuff, tremendous in Europe and yeah. the Middle East. And also, I love how they did the when they brought out the caliber eleven in '69. Mm -hmm. They uh, worked with what was it Hamilton? Yeah, a whole, whole bunch of them. Whole bunch of them got together. Yeah. yeah. They were racing against Seiko yeah. to first automatic chronograph, but they put the crown on the other side. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. I saw and that. I thought that's cool. Yeah. You know, run with that. Yeah. That's distinctive. Right. You don't see that. Well, a lot of their early, because they were dashboard clocks, right? They had the crown at the top. Right. You know, right. Almost like a bull head, you yeah, know, yeah. stuff like that. So, yeah. yeah, do something that's like identifiable and becomes iconic, right? But pulls from your own legacy. I think that's. Anyway, we're doing their work for them now, I think, yeah. so... Uh, consultants. <laughs> yeah, cons call me. I doubt it. <laughs> I don't wait for the phone to ring. <laughs> no, no actually, I've been to their factory. They have uh, scores of people. And they like, tons a whole of history. Department. Yeah, tons of history. It's a great... I mean, no doubt. Yeah, and it, it, they were really great people. And, and their factory was impressive. Mm -hmm. and their QC was very impressive, all the steps. They, I did a video about it. It was impressive. You know, they just lacked that magic maybe or maybe they don't maybe they maybe their sales figures are awesome so do you think the these these statistics on richard millet are as it says here private yeah so are these the uh, sales statistics that's if they release them you know it's up to the company and it's interesting they haven't we haven't seen anything since 2018 maybe it's made up <laughs> Although, can you imagine that 4,000 watches and you pull in a quarter billion francs, so franc to a dollar is pretty close, so. Yeah. Yeah, that's impressive. That is impressive. That is impressive. 4,000 range masters. <laughs> oh my god, 4,000 <laughs> range masters. That would be amazing. That would That'd be, be awesome. amazing. Anyway, guys, uh, let's hear your <laughs> thoughts down below. Uh, what is your brand that you, you know? Prestigious brands. That's what we really, you Prestigious know. Prestigious brands. Yeah. That you have a kind of love-hate thing. Well, not, yeah, yeah kind of hate to love. Or we love started hate-hate, and then we both ended up with kind of, kind of love-hate. Yeah, a kind of not, respect, res but... Yeah, respectable hate. Respect <laughs> respectable hate. That's nice. Uh, yeah, do let me know in the comments down below. Thank you again for sponsoring the production You're of welcome. this video. You're welcome. Links, everything down below, so check out Mark mm. if you haven't already. We will catch you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. Onwards and upwards.
Right, I'm gonna go lie down now. Good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs>